Hello listeners, this video discusses To Kill a Mockingbird, a novel written by Harper Lee. Neil Harper Lee was an American novelist. She was born in the year 1926 and died in the year 2016. Her most famous novel is To Kill a Mockingbird, which won the Pulitzer Prize in the year 1961. And this novel became a classic of modern American literature. Harper Lee has received many honorary degrees, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in the year 2007. This was awarded for her contribution to literature. The notable works of Harper Lee are To Kill a Mockingbird, published in the year 1960, Go Set a Watchman in the year 2015. Apart from novels, Harper Lee has also published articles. Let us see a small introduction to the novel To Kill a Mockingbird. This novel is based on Harper Lee's observation of her family and neighbors. This novel has some events that occurred near her hometown in the year 1936 when she was just 10 years old. The novel focuses on the themes of racism and class which happened in the deep south of the 1930s. The novel is depicted through the eyes of two children. The reason behind writing this novel was her inspiration by racist attitudes in her hometown of Mandroville, Alabama. Her novel Go Set a Watchman is a sequel to Mockingbird, but later it was confirmed to be an earlier draft of to kill a mockingbird novel. This novel instantly got successful soon when it got published in the year 1960. The book was highly read in high schools and middle schools. We also come across the issues of rape and racial inequality. Also we come across the theme of destruction of innocence, racial injustice. Many critiques and scholars has addressed few more themes that focuses on the issues of class, courage, compassion and gender roles in the Deep South. Deep South is a cultural and geographic sub-region of the southern United States. Deep South also has another name. It is mentioned as Lower South. The readers can analyze the character's tolerance and the decry of prejudice. In the year 2006, British librarians ranked the book as it is ahead of the Bible, commenting as every adult should read before they die. This novel totally has 31 chapters. This video contains the whole summary of the novel. Let us now see the character list. Jean Lewis Finch, otherwise called as Scout, who is the novel's protagonist. As the novel moves on, Scout grows from the age of 6 to 9 years. She is a tomboyish girl. Most of her neighbors and family members take offense and command her to act like a woman. But Atticus, her father, defends her right to wear what she wants and doesn't force her to act like a lady. Scout, she admires both her father Atticus and her older brother named Jem. She observes her father Atticus as a more knowledgeable person than her teachers. She eagerly waits for every summertime vacation so that she can spend time with her neighborhood friends, especially her brother Jem and their friend Dill. Jeremy Atticus Finch, otherwise called as Jem, who is the older brother of Scouts. He is nine years when the novel begins. Jem is the ringleader of their group, especially when he plays with Dill and his sister. He desperately wants to look brave and courageous. He is also intelligent and reads more. Atticus Finch is the father of Scout and Jem. Atticus is almost 50 years old. He is the oldest father living in Maycomb. He is a lawyer. He is kind, compassionate and he treats his children like adults and he listens to both the sides of arguments. Charles Baker Harris, 
otherwise called as Dill. He is a friend of Jem and Scout and he is a nephew of Miss Rachel. One summer time, Dill comes to stay with his aunt Miss Rachel in Maycomb and that summer time, he befriends the siblings. He is a prolific liar and storyteller. He plays all his dramas with Jem and Scott. Dill plays all manner of characters. He is an excellent actor while portraying the villains. He fascinates the siblings with his enacting skill. Also, he prefers his own stories to reality. Author Radley, otherwise called as Boo, he is the youngest Radley. His life fills in mystery. When the novel begins, he is unwilling to come out of the house and that leads to wild rumours that he eats cats and squirrels and also his neighbours say that he walks during nights in order to peep into next door windows. The kids, Scout, Jem and Dill are terrified, in fact fascinated by this character, Radley. They try to play all mischiefs in order to get him to come out of the house. Bob Ebel, he is a racist patriarch of the evil family who lives in the Maycomb dump. He is a drunkard and also an aggressive person. He breaks the rules of the Maycomb. Miss Maudi Atkinson, who is the neighbour of the Finches, who stays across the street. Miss Maudi is in her 40s and she is a widow. She loves to garden and she hates to stay inside house. Kalpurnia, who is a black cook in the Finch family. Atticus employed her in order to take care of the kids, followed by the death of his wife. She raises the kids, Scout and Jen, Aunt Alexandra, who is a sister of Atticus. She is married. Tom Robinson, he is a 25-year-old black man whom Atticus defends in court against the Evel's case. The case is that Bob Evel claims that his daughter Mela was raped by Tom. Tom is a kind and a churchgoer and he is married, father of three children. And he belongs to black community in Mako and a good employee of Mr. D's. Mayala Evil, who is the 19-year daughter of Bob Evil. The novel also has many other characters. Let us check on to those characters when we deal the summary. The story begins in the small town of Mako, Alabama. The novel's setting is in the middle of the Great Depression. The characters are introduced. Scout, who is a six-year-old, who lives with her older brother, Jem, and her father, Atticus, who is widowed. Atticus is a lawyer and he makes enough money to keep the family comfortable out of poverty. He works for long hours. He completely relies on Caprina, who is a black cook to the family. She helps to raise the kids of Atticus. Both the kids, Scout and Jem, they spend their time in creating and acting out fantasies. That year, a boy named Dill comes to spend the summer time with his aunt named Miss Rachel, who is the neighbour of the Finch's family. Dill, Scout and Jem, all three children become friends and those siblings, they are pushed by Dill's wild imagination. Soon they get obsessed with him. The three children run around and play together in the nearby yards. And there is a nearby estate next to their house, which is called as Radley Place. The owner of the house is Nathan Radley. Nathan Bradley is the owner of the house. He has a reclusive brother named Arthur Radley. The children call him as Boo. And this character 
author Ragni interests and terrifies the children. There is a rumor that spreads around and the children believe that he is supposedly locked in the house and was once stabbed by his father with scissors. His father's name is Mr. Radley. The local children spread rumors saying that author Radley eats neighborhood cats and squirrels. The children also play dare games. The dare is that they have to run and touch the Radley house and come back bravely. It would always be Jim who runs up and touches the Radley house and Scott is very much sure saying that she could see someone watching them from inside behind a curtain. Their friend Dill, he stays in Mississippi and when the summer ends, he returns to Mississippi from Maycomb. Now the summer vacation is over. Scout returns to school. The first day of her school, her teacher Miss Carolyn criticizes her for not reading properly and forbids her writing in cursive. She returns upset from school. Her father encourages her to think about how Miss Carolyn must have felt. Her father advises her that Miss Carolyn had no idea of the Maycomb children, just as how Scout had no idea how to deal with her teacher. And as the days go by, when the children play around their yard, when they come back from the school, Jem and Scout occasionally find treasures stuffed inside a knot hole of a tree next to the Radley's fence. And when the local children find that there is several sticks of gum, the children spread the news saying that Radley's property is poison and everything in it is poison. This children, Scott and Jem, they ignore the rumor and they fetch whatever they get from the tree. The next summer arrives, Dill returns to Maycomb. Scott, Dill and Jem grow more daring and they wanted to sneak onto the Radley's property. One night they look into the window but Nathan Radley sees them and thinks they are thieves. When the three children run away from Nathan's fence, Jem's pants get caught in Radley's fence. Jem leaves his pant and runs and tells to the neighborhood children. Bill shouts that he won the dare game. Hearing this, adults in the Mako, they fear of even crossing Radley's house. That same day, Jem goes back to Radley's fence to retrieve the pants. He finds his pant mended and folded. Meanwhile, Scout and Jem, they get gifts from the North Hole tree. Days later, Nathan Radley, he summons on the tree, claiming that the tree is dying. Seeing this, Jem is hurt, especially when Atticus notes that the tree doesn't look ill. They think that Nathan Radley has wantedly closed the North Hole of the tree. Few months later, during the winter, the Finn's neighbor, Miss Maudie Atkinson's house, catches fire. When Scout, Atticus and Jem watch the fire burn, someone had put a blanket around Scott's shoulders. Immediately, Jem realizes that Boo must have done it. However, Scout is horrified by the act. But while saying this to their father, Atticus laughs. That year, their father is appointed by the court to defend a black man named Tom Robinson. Tom Robinson is accused of raping Mayella Evil, who is the daughter of a poor but notorious vicious white man named Bob Evil. In the Maycomb town, there is always a racial tension because one part of the Maycomb is surrounded with white people and the other part is surrounded with black community. 
Though white and the black community people speak the same language English, their way of utterance and accent differs. And by this, there is a great difference in them. There is racial discrimination that goes around the town. And when this raving problem flares up, the whole town is in tension. Especially the children of Atticus, though they belong to white community, they are brutally targeted by their schoolmates, neighbors, townspeople, and even some of their family members mock them as their father is defending a black man. Atticus advises her children, especially Scout, because Scout is insulted in school and she tries to respond by beating them. Atticus pleads with Scout and asks her to remain silent when she is hurted. Francis, who is the grandson of Alexandra, he is a spoiled child and he bullies Scott for Atticus defending Tom Robinson. When he started to bull Scott, Scott beats him up, but her uncle Jack scolds her for hurting him and tells that she is wrong. Scott pleads him to listen to the justice from her side. He also pleads Scott saying to keep this entire situation a secret from Atticus. That Christmas, the children receive a rifle. Atticus, who refuses to teach them how to shoot, his humble advice is not to kill a mockingbird. Doing so, it is a sin. Later in that winter, Scott and Jim, they take this rifle in order to hunt rabbits. They find a Maycomb dog named Tim Johnson who behaves strangely. Their cook Calparina recognizes that the dog Tim Johnson has rabies and she alerts the neighbors and calls the police named Heck Tate. Mr. Tate asks Atticus to shoot the dog, but the children were surprised of their father knowing to shoot because they remember their father refusing to shoot and they had no idea of their father's shooting skill. Once during the spring, the siblings started to walk on the road to meet Atticus after his work. As they walked to find their father, they had to pass the house of Mrs. Dubois, who is a horrendous woman. She calls the children and abuses them for their father defending Tom Robinson. Mrs. Dubois, she frightens the children and forces them to read to her every day after school for a month. Eventually, the lady died. The reason behind her death is that Mrs. Dubois is a lady who is addicted with morphine. She had used Jen's daily reading in order to break herself out of her addiction. Once Calpurina takes the children to attend the black church on Sunday, the children are warmly received in the church. Scott is shocked to discover that Calpurina lives a double life because she speaks differently in the Finch home and she is different when she is around blacks. And when they return to their home, Aunt Alexandria, who is a sister of Atticus, is there in their house in order to stay for a while. During her stay, she provided some feminine influence for Scott her aunt Alexandra, she forbids Scott from visiting Calparina's home as she is black. Alexandra's social views are generally conservative than Atticus. She treats Calparina more like a servant than a family member. And she also tries to imply the same social view to the children. Alexandra also emphasizes that their family, that is the Finch's family, belong to a fine family because they have been on the same land for generations. When Alexandra mentions this, Jem realizes of the past logic that was around 
evil's family because evil's family also mentioned them as fine flocks as they belong to white community so jem understands that these white community proudly call them as fine family or fine flocks meanwhile when aunt alexandra forbids scott from visiting caprina's house scott discovers dil who's hiding inside the bed as he wants to run away from his mother and her new husband dil also says that he feels lonely and also suggests that bu radley must have also been lonely for years and bu could not run away because possibly he has nowhere to go it was the last weekend before tom's robinson's trial scott jem and dil they observed the tensions going around in maycomb there were group of men congregate on the finches lawn before the trial day tom robinson is put inside the prison now right on the trial day scott jem and dil grows more curious to find articles at the court house a mob surrounds the jail to attack tom scott is scared and feels uncomfortable when she finds herself in the middle of a group of men whom she doesn't know in the group she recognizes a man named mr cummingham who asks to scott about his son named walter who is a classmate of scott at the trial articles presents a powerful defense of tom and makes it clear that both mayla and mr evil are lying he also defends that tom could not use his left arm since he is right handed and so he could not have choked and beaten a woman and that mayla's injuries indicate that whoever bet her was left handed and such is that mr evil is the left hander mr evil is the father of mayla and he has bet mayla himself when he caught mayla touching tom now in the prison tom he finds that running away is the only option even if it made him look guilt this trial incident is observed by scott jam and dil they watch the proceedings from the balcony where the black people are forced to sit because the black people are not allowed inside the court they have a separate place to gather that is the balcony when the prosecuting lawyer mr gilmer questions tom Dil wants to leave because he's extremely upset by the racist way that Mr. Gilmer spoke to Tom. So this speech by Mr. Gilmer to Tom happened in the past. So Tom when he leaves the court, the two other children accompany him. They meet Mr. Raymond. Raymond is a white man who chose to live with black people. Raymond finds Dil who is still a child. but can identify the discrimination that grows around their society raymond finds the adults had chose to ignore the sense of right and wrong atticus son jem is sure that his father will win the case but all the white jury convicts tom as guilty of rape however jem and scott is devastated by the verdict and their faith is shaken when tom tries to escape from the prison and is eventually killed he is shot by the policeman as he tried to escape the prison later even though robinson was convicted evil is furious that atticus made him look like a fool in court evil now harasses helen robinson who is the widow of tom He also tries to break into Judge Taylor's house. Days later, when Jem and Scott walk home alone from a Halloween pagan party, Mr. Evil attacks them. Scott can't see much of what happens to them, but hears Jem's arm break before someone rushes to help. In the fight, Mr. Evil is stabbed to death. The man who saved Jem and Scott carries Jem home. When the children are left inside their home, 
Scott realizes that the man is Boo Radley. The policeman Mr. Tate decides to keep Boo's involvement in Mr. Evil's death. However, Scott understands that Boo had only killed Evil. Boo tells good night and goes home. Scott recognizes and realizes the past experiences during the summer time. She begins to understand that Boo truly was their neighbor and cared about them. Now Atticus is at home. Scott falls asleep as Atticus reads to her and as Jem sleeps on his bedside. Let us see the themes carried in this novel. Good, evil and human dignity, prejudice. There is an involvement of classism, sexism and racism in this novel because there is a stereotyped group on how to treat people. The white characters in the novel are close-minded and dangerous. They are also ridiculous and misguided. Growing up is another theme in this novel because the novel runs for almost three years. We see Scott, Dill and Jen. They grow up both physically and mentally. They have a firm and uncomplicated idea of what's good and what's wrong. The children have also lost their innocence and have come to more complex understanding of how people and the world work. Courage This novel proposes the idea of courage because winning doesn't work. Instead, it's about thinking and it is that what we choose is right or wrong. The symbol used in this novel is the mockingbird. The novel's title itself is To Kill a Mockingbird. Here, Mockingbird symbolizes the innocence and beauty in the novel. We see Articles and Miss Maudie tell Scott and Jim that killing a mockingbird is sinful and that is the reason Articles did not choose to teach the children on how to shoot or how to use the rifle. Because Mockingbird does not cause any harm to anyone or anything. They only sing and they only create a peaceful environment by singing. And Mockingbirds are pure creatures and killing them would be in contrast an act of senseless cruelty. The characters just like Mockingbirds are Tom Robinson and Boo Radley because they are fragile, kind and moral individuals who are misunderstood by their prejudiced society. Hope this video helps. If you have query, please write it down on the comment section. Thank you for listening.